Today on Bar Me, I get stood up. I'm Joe, I'm here to see Nick Mead. Is Nick not around today? No. no. Oh, really? He's a social hand grenade. Meet Britain's backyard arms dealer. Would I be entertainment? All the drummers and there's fireworks. Would it be sales? All I can say is I never actually got any gold. Would it be weapons development? I could disable a 432 in 45 seconds with a little hammer. I don't know. Well, like, would it be arms dealer? I even sold some to Dubai, which I was a little bit worried about. You never know what the next phone call will be. And have a little lie down in a tank curse. Can I go in the back? My name is Joe Cowan, and I'm on a mission to meet the military obsessives who take things to the next level. Well, on today's balmy road trip, we are heading up to Banbury and we are on our way to meet a, a man called Nick Mead. So he owns over 80 tanks, as you do. Uh, but the, the real reason that we're really interested in speaking to Nick today is because he's somehow converted a tank into a hearse and he performs actual funerals of actual dead people with this tank hearse and I don't really understand it and I want to go and find out why. So, next stop tanks a lot. I was excited to get going, but it would seem things were already going off track. Hello mate, are you well? Yeah, good, good. I'm Joe, I'm here to see Nick Mead. You're here to see me, not Nick. Oh really? Yeah, my name's Todd. Nice to meet you man, how are you? Good. Is Nick not around today? No. Oh really? And normally I do all this sort of thing. Oh really? Got you, yeah. got you. Nick, Nick is the most politically incorrect person you've ever met in your entire life. So maybe not best to be on camera. Um, I, I, I just don't do anything with him uh, on television, on camera, nothing. I, I don't do it. So why? I because it, it's a it could be a minefield. Oh really? He just he's a social hand grenade. So I tend to do all of this stuff. You do all the media stuff. So yeah. Nick's not here at all. No, no, he's in Lincolnshire. Okay, no worries. Well, is Vanessa around? Yes. Yeah, Can we have a chat with Vanessa? Cool. I'd arranged to meet Nick through one of his employees, but here I was, jilted at my own funeral. Hello. Yeah. So he's just disappeared last minute? Yeah. Oh, that's a real shame. That's a Nick. That that is, is that a Nick that thing is, to do? That's Nick. That's why I handle so much of this sort of thing, because I'm always around. Yeah, got you. Um, uh, that, it's just a shame because we'd kind of spoke that it was going to be yeah, about I Nick. Know. It was all on here to say what you were doing. Um, if you give us a call in the morning, uh -huh. and then I'll see what his movements are, and yeah. then we can maybe do it for some time tomorrow then. All right, well, I think we'll take off, and uh, I'll be in touch with you, Vanessa. Yeah. And uh, see you guys very soon. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice all one. Thanks yeah. again. Cheers, Cheers guys. Bye. There it is. So there's the hearse that we were hoping to film with. Nick's unfortunately not here today. He's been called off to pick up some armor, but we're going to be back tomorrow and hopefully find, find the man behind all this. I can't wait. Hello, buddy. Hello. And we are back. It's day two and we're back to see Nick Mead. Uh, he couldn't see us yesterday because I think something about some tanks came up for sale last minute and he had to go and get them. So I can't even be mad really because man's got to buy tanks, hasn't he? So we thought we'd come back and see him again and hopefully get to hang out with him a bit more today and find out what makes him tick. Hello. Nick, Hello. how are you? Not bad. Nice to meet you, I'm Joe. Yeah, I'm sorry about yesterday. Oh I mate, don't worry about it, it's fine. fine. Don't worry about it, it's absolutely we fine. We are currently bidding on Land Rovers. Um, oh really? To go to Texas. Is this like a typical day at Tanks a lot? It is, yeah, it is. It's pretty rushed today. Well, it sounds like you guys have got an absolutely crazy job. It is crazy, yeah. It's yeah. very busy, all sorts of things happening the whole time. Um, yeah, everything from weddings, funerals, proms, uh, weapons development, and we did rent a load of tanks to the British Army. 
You're lending tanks to the British Army. We were the enemy on their firepower show, and we were there for ten days with seven vehicles Sorry, and uh, run them, run some of our vehicles ragged. And I was disappointed to see that on all of their promotional footage, you not did see one single Russian vehicle, and it was all movies and blowing stuff up, and it was yeah, all big time. Let's take you up the road and show you this new one that's just come in. Yeah, that's it. So this is the one that you got yesterday. Yeah. Oh my days! This is mental. So when did it all start? Um, it would have been best part of 30 years ago, I suppose. 30? Yeah. Yeah. I had a butcher shop. And, <laughs> Is that um, what you used to do? Yeah. And um, I saw this Abbott self-propelled gun for sale. And it was a bloke called Steve Woods. And uh, I rang him up. And uh, he said, any Abbott you like, two and a half thousand quid. Is that an Abbott? Yeah. That was done 28 miles. Oh, really? So that's a brand new tank, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and anyway, one way or another, um, when I went and paid him a deposit on this tank, it, um, he couldn't get it to drive. It would start, but it wouldn't drive. He sent me a deposit back and he put it through, the, uh, through an incinerator and just melted it. And that was a brand new vehicle. It had cellophane on the seats and everything. That's why I, uh, I chose that one. But then I got on the government tender lists and uh, one way or another, I ended up, um, and I, I could actually bid direct. And I bought a pair of Abbott's for 3,600. So that's what started all this, the yeah. love of Abbott's, is it? And the idea was to sell one Abbott for about 10 grand yeah. and keep the other one. And then I thought, hang on a minute, this is a lot better than butchering. Well, how yeah. do you describe your job? Um, crikey. Would, I be, would it be entertainment? Would it be sales? Would it be weapons development? I don't know. A would I be the arms dealer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do sell a lot of tanks to um, other countries. I even sold some to Dubai, which I was a little bit worried about. Because one minute they say you sell that, tanks to Dubai. Yeah, they or like the, ta the Dubai government. Yes, and um, what the it, hell? Was, it was through an intermediate, which I was a bit more worried about. And um, they said they just wanted rough tanks to blow up. So I pick them out some cheap tanks. Next thing, they want um, them uh, shot blasted and repainted, and they wanted the road wheels changing, and they wanted the track pads changing. What? So this is the, That's the tank my hearse. hearse, right? So there's actually a coffin in there at the minute. Yeah. So how did the whole tank hearse thing well, start? We had, a, we had a tank limo, which is two welded together into a big long one. And that was doing a bit of work. And then um, someone was talking about, why don't you do funerals? And I thought about it. And I walked around a 432 and the space that was available. And I thought, yeah, we can make a lovely hearse. And, um, and I started on it loosely and then um, Someone just mentioned that one of my older instructors was quite ill. He never told me, but he had cancer in a big way. Anyway, I went shooting over to see him. And um, anyway, when I went home that night, I actually went in the, in the workshops and, um, and actually started on the tank hearse that very night. It what? was about 10 o'clock when I got back. Because you thought he might like a tank I, funeral. I thought he'd love a tank for his funeral. And um, anyway, I just beavered into it. And the very next day he died. And I thought, bollocks, we'll never finish it now. And uh, sometimes a project goes right and everyone you ring up, oh yeah, you know, we're really slack, I can come over and lock in an hour and measure up for the glass. And that's how it went. Everything just came together. Everything just fell and, into place. And his funeral was booked for about two weeks time and we had it finished completely. And so he was laid to rest? Yeah. And that was yeah, the first Yeah, he had a, a big Rolls Royce and then um, we, we met in a sort of a siding and the undertaker slipped him out of the Rolls Royce and rolled him into the back of the tank limo, the tank hearse. And then we did his funeral. That's lovely. So he's a proper yeah. tank man then? Oh yeah, he loved it. Yeah. Yeah. But he did, was... did he ever express that he would want to be buried no. in a tank? No, he never did. No, he never got the chance. But we thought he ought to go and all his friends thought it'd be a good idea. Yeah, and everyone was happy with Yeah, he's probably cursing me now. <laughs> <laughs> My one chance to go to Rolls Royce, you bastard, and you got me out. <laughs> so it all started then as just a love just of a tanks. Fun, it was and a fun you've, hobby. You've developed it into a business over the yeah. years. Yeah. But it didn't start off like that. Well, Initially, I, I was just going to keep one as a toy and then sell one for a profit. And then the phone rang. I was literally making sausages and someone had heard I'd got a tank and it was for Vodafone and 60 of their people were going to an eventing place and they were doing everything from archery to clay shooting to goodness knows what. And they asked if I could have a tank there. Um, anyway, it did the day and they loved it. And they immediately booked me for another day, but they wanted both tanks and they were paying one day paid for one tank 
well, so you, two tanks the, the working. The day you bought it, basically, you'd made your money back, essentially. Yeah. And that's when yeah. you start thinking, okay. This has got to be better than butchering. Here. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I, I was and a butcher for a little while. Well, yeah. Or a butcher's help, so. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard quite, work. It's hard work. It's fast work, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, not, about not three months later, my old man goes, uh, so what are you doing with this tank, then? I said, well, I keep renting it out. He said, what do you get for it? I said, well, they're giving me a thousand pound per tank per day. He says, yeah, but the fuel must be a lot. I said, yeah, but they fill it up for free at the end. And he said, what about the haulies? I said, they pay that. <laughs> and he said, do you get lunch? I said, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, bloody hell, you'll be selling the shop soon. And I said, um, I'm thinking about it, Dad. And he looked at me. Was he a butcher? Yes. Well, I was the third generation. He okay. looked at me and he said, do it. And I did. And um, best thing I ever did. Yeah. yeah, best thing I ever did. Any regrets? No, 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 none at all. Seems like you have a good time here. We have a lot of fun, and um, you never know what the next phone call will be. You How, really don't. Yeah, that's the, that's the exciting part. This is an interesting one. My parents left me a little tiny bungalow on the beach, and um, I've always had things getting stuck. And I thought, hanging out with Nick really was good fun. He's a true British eccentric. I could tell each vehicle meant a lot to him, and they all came with their own story. I just wasn't sure which ones to take with a little pinch of salt. I did a job for Nintendo, and they said, can we drive around London with a 50 cow on top of a Humvee for loads of people with AK-47s? I said, yeah, not a problem. They've all got to be blonde, they've all got to be wearing camouflage bikinis, and they've all got to be well sexy. And we pull up outside David Cameron's house. There's all these police, MP5 machine guns in my face and all that. They used to lay eggs and I'd go in there and I'd get the eggs and try and incubate them. And I used to have to put a litter bin on my head. An RPG came through his window of the Humvee, in one window and out the other, under his chin. How many camels is my sister worth? And he went, seven! <laughs> like that. That's pretty good. I could disable a 432 in 45 seconds with either a half inch spanner or a little hammer. There was a program called National Geographic uh, Supercar Mega Build. Shane Lynch made that. Yeah, I personally think that we are a mixture of apes and aliens. Smell that. That's the smell of a tank. Yeah, that smells like when you don't wash your camping stuff. You got it, yeah. That's got exactly it. I was still trying to wrap my head around what Nick had said to me about apes and aliens, but there's this other story he's known for. Little did the team know that when they bought the tank, it was hiding a secret from the Gulf War. Is that what I think it is? Oh, Five gold bars in total, and believed to be worth two million pounds. There was kids running around and everything else, and the whole world knew about it. There was people texting, Nick's found gold, it was going everywhere. And I was thinking, hmm, you know, maybe if I'd been all on my own, it would have been a different story. You found some gold bars, right? Ah, now, I can't talk about that much because of the film. What's, oh, there's yeah. a film coming out yeah, about well, it? Well, it's, it's a bit Bollywood, so you never know what's happening, but um, I can't mention much about it. All I can say is I never actually got any gold. But I saw the video of you guys finding the gold. Yes. And I was thinking that's the exact video I would make if I wanted to keep five bars and say we'd found five bars. But, but it wasn't. Nothing. No. But I would have staged the whole video. I would have kept like five and uh, no? Should have done. <laughs> oh, the problem is there were several people videoing at the same time on live streams. I thought it was- So that was that then. Nick had assured me that there was no gold on site. There are lots of guard dogs though. You love me, don't you? Gorgeous. It's not all gold bars and funerals for Nick. He runs a range of experience days and even teaches people how to drive tracked vehicles. Is there a, a tank that we could have a look in? Can I jump inside one? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's one over here that we use for H licenses and that's quite plush inside. I believe the lads have put a carpet in it. Oh, really? <laughs> but we've been doing some H licenses for the army and they've been sending us some um, soldiers to put through their test. And, um, oh, I can't get in the back so of that. So you're, you're, train, you're training soldiers, you're supplying arms, you're yeah. essentially the new like BAE systems. Uh, BAE systems send their people here to be uh, really? H licensed. Yeah, um, I'll show you one of my ones over here. Yes, please. Um, these ones over here are called Sultans, and that's a command vehicle. And it's a bit boring, really. Um, it's tracked 
but what I do is I cut the tops off and I turn them into these, I call them safaris. Look at this, this is very fancy. How so, comfy so is what, that? What's the purpose of this one then? Um, Asian weddings. Asian weddings? Asian weddings. So we have the groom, leg either side of the abbot, driving along, then we have three of these in front, fireworks and all it? these dancing girls and, and what, you'd be driving or you'd be back here? Uh, no, I'd be driving, yeah. They normally have a few supercars, but supercars are getting a bit boring nowadays. Yeah. I mean, this one, the last one I did, I followed in a Lamborghini and a, I think it was a Ferrari, and then there was a line of phantoms behind me. But at the end of the day, that didn't get any attention. No. They went mad on the tanks. It's yeah, all about, uh, all about Instagram, do you reckon? Yep. And you're right where you need to be to capitalize exactly, on Exactly, yes. You've got to look for opportunities. You don't seem like the kind of guy that's out to sort of rip anyone off. I like all butchers try and give value. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, I still run my business like a butcher shop, and I want every single person who comes here to go, that was good, I'm going to come back there again. Should we see if it's a runner? Yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. It was good to hear that Nick ran his business like a butcher shop. It's just a shame that the sausages were slightly off today. No, as I thought. No joy? No. We just put batteries on the vehicles that we need. That's all right. But should we try one of the other ones? Yeah, I've got sure. three of these. Yeah, Maybe yeah, one sure. of them will. No, until we get a booking, we won't have a go on them. Oh well. There was one vehicle running today, and as luck would have it, it was the one I'd come to see. We just have to have a go in the, uh, in the hearse. Yeah, let's check the hearse out then. I want to find out more about it. Maybe it was the excitement. Maybe it was the occasion. But I was dying to get inside. Could I, uh, could I go in the back? <laughs> what, lay in the coffin? Well, is it disrespectful if I just lie down here and you drive it round? No, I don't think Is that think all right? So. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I'd quite like to try and get a feel of yeah. what the... Right. What it'll, when you hire it later, yeah. when you need it. <laughs> it's probably not a huge issue for the usual passenger, but I couldn't help but think that the rumbling of the engine could be pretty distressing for someone who was mourning. Next time on Barmy, there's weapons. I did kids' birthday parties. Parrots. They're quite nasty. And a funeral for a gnome. Ashes to ashes, rust to rust. <laughs> <laughs>